Hello and welcome to Runkle the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle, I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. Today I want to talk about how the government in Canada admitted that some of the weapons laws are racist. It actually goes a step beyond that though, because they argued that the laws were racist and therefore we should read racist intent into them, and that's why the government should win this case. It's really exceptional, and I mean exceptional as in, wow, somebody actually did this. So let's have a look at this case. So what happens is this woman, Ms. Steves, tries to import 19 finger rings, and they're described as follows. Uh, goods in issue. The goods in issue are rings made of metal designed to be worn on a finger. Each ring has what appear to be two metal spikes or points, which are part of the ring and which protrude out to resemble cat ears. Okay, so I already know what these are because these are a sort of common stupid self-defense item. And you can buy these online. Here on Etsy, you can see somebody's got them for sale at 1876. Um, they say it's a handmade item, it's made to order, and okay, maybe it's actually a handmade item that's made to order, but here you can get it on AliExpress for $2. So, yeah. Basically, they're a ring with two kind of vaguely pointy ends. And don't buy one, even at $2, because these things are slightly more effective for self-defense than, say, string cheese, but slightly less effective than many other things you might find, like, say, this rock that I found in my backyard. Um, and if you want, I can sell you this rock here for a dollar. And if your name is Kane, I'll cut that to half off. Uh, if your name is Kane, you can get this rock for 50 cents. Anyway, so these are a dumb self-defense item. But the CBSA, the Canadian Border Services Agency, got really upset with this. And they seized those rings. When they came across the border, they said, mine... So at that point, they sent her a letter saying, we've seized these, you can either give up and let us keep them, or you can fight us in court. And to her credit, Ms. Steve said, I'm going to fight you. Let's see you in court. So why are they trying to take this? Why are they saying that they're banned? Well, from the giant list of banned things in Canada, we have this entry right here. Any finger ring that has one or more blades or sharp objects that are capable of being projected from the surface of the ring. Okay, so what does that mean? What does it mean to be capable of being projected from the surface of the ring? I already have a video on this because the courts have already examined this question and they've already determined that these are not the sort of thing that is captured by that. What that actually is trying to capture is another stupid self-defense thing that is less effective than Mr. Rock here, but it looks like this. And so you can see this thing has this little tiny blade in it that has this little button here. And basically, if you push the button, this tiny little blade that isn't going to do anything comes out of this really awkward to use ring. These things are garbage. But this is what they're trying to ban in Canada, as opposed to those cat ear rings. That's what the courts have already held in a couple of different cases. Nevertheless, the Canadian Border Services Agency was saying, we are going to take this. We're going to claim it. So they each side had different arguments. Ms. Steves, her arguments are summed up in this paragraph that says, Ms. Steves' principal legal argument relied on CBSA Memorandum D-19-13-2, which states that jewelry to which spikes are affixed will generally not meet the definition of a prohibited weapon. Ms. Steves also submitted that paragraph 84.1b of the criminal code is circular because it refers to a prohibited weapon as anything prescribed to be a prohibited weapon. So that argument the court's not going to agree with because the, well, all that clause means is that they can make regulations to ban things. That's not circular. It just says if something's on our list that we've added to the banning list, then it's also banned. Um, it's necessary that they have that language in there for various legal reasons, but this argument is not going to fly. I should note, Miss Steves is self-representing here. She's on her own. She doesn't have a lawyer. So she does a heck of a job for somebody who's navigating the system without the tools to do so. Uh, that she previously imported identical goods. Again, the court is not going to take that as, as meaning anything. Uh, that some of the factors underlying the CBSA's decision are applicable to other goods, specifically tactical pens, which she asserts are legal. You see that they put that in quotations, so... 
uh, that argument isn't really going anywhere either. And that the CBSA's reasoning in its decision that the rings could be dipped in poison or bacterial culture fails and is hypothetical and not specific to the goods in issue, and that doing so would actually be dangerous to the wearer. Um, that was actually a ridiculous argument from the CBSA on that one, because there's all sorts of things that could be dipped in poison or bacterial culture, like, say, this fountain pen, which actually has a reservoir of liquid. Um, fountain pens aren't banned. The notion that the banning is related to that makes no sense whatsoever, but hey, the government is trying real hard here. So what does the CBSA or the government argue here? So the CBSA submitted that the criminal code and the regulations prohibit the possession of certain weapons that pose a particular danger to the public, for example, because they are easily concealed, such as knives which open by centrifugal force. Now, I'm just going to say, uh, these weapons are not really a danger to the public because mostly if somebody pulls one out at you, you're probably just going to laugh at it. And laughter isn't super dangerous overall. These things, again, are not very effective. I They're in the category of things I would not recommend for self-defense because they're stupid. Uh, if I was allowed to carry a weapon for self-defense, this thing would not be on my list at all, ever. I'd rather carry just about anything else. So the CBSA submitted that the rings pose uh, such a danger to the public because they can be concealed in the hand, ready for use as a weapon, with the spikes either inside the hand or on top of the finger, and that their sole purpose is to inflict harm. Again, they're less effective than Mr. Rock. The CBSA submitted that the rings meet the criteria set out in the regulations in that they are finger rings with sharp objects capable of being projected from their surface and are therefore prescribed to be prohibited weapons and consequently prohibited from importation into Canada. Now we're going to get into some of the really funny arguments. In response to Ms. Steve's arguments, the CBSA submitted that Memorandum D1913-2 is not binding on the tribunal. Now I should note that this memorandum is authored by the CBSA. It's written by the government. So what the government is saying is, listen, don't believe those lying us. <laughs> that's, um, that's kind of a funny argument, right? Uh, furthermore, the CBSA submitted that in any case, the memorandum does not apply to the rings in issue because it indicates that jewelry to which spikes are affixed are not prohibited weapons. The CBSA submitted that for the rings in issue in this appeal, the spikes are not affixed to the rings, but rather are part of the rings, which seems like a really stupid distinction because what they're talking about is things like, you know, spiked clothing where you've got it with a rivet or something like that, which you would say is part of the clothing. Uh, this seems like a distinction without a difference. That said, the thing about the memorandum not being binding on the tribunal, that is correct. The tribunal is not bound by the government's opinion, but you'd think that the government would at least be bound by their own opinion? Why are they putting these memos out for the public to read if they're not actually going to be followed and you can't rely on them safely? Hmm. The CBSA further submitted that Ms. Steve's argument regarding the previous importation of identical goods is irrelevant to the present appeal. That is, um, there's plenty of case law to say that that's correct because you can't say, hey, I brought this in or hey, they're sold in stores or anything like that. The court will just not consider that. All right, so the court had to look at three things. First, they have to be finger rings to, to be banned. Second, they must have one or more blades or sharp objects. And third, the blades or sharp objects must be capable of being projected from the surface of the rings. So these are obviously rings, and the court says, yeah, that's, that's obvious. With regards to them being blades or sharp objects, they noted that sharp objects typically mean having an edge or point able to cut or pierce. And so the court says it is therefore doubtful whether the spikes constitute points able to cut or pierce because they're super blunt. So they don't really rely on this part, but they say, mm, doubt, uh, we, we have some serious doubt. The main issue is going to be this capable of being projected part. And here the court is going to have to get into interpretation. What does that mean? And as mentioned, there's a couple of cases that have already found that capable of being projected uh, means something other than what they're claiming here. Uh, they, they actually go to the French, which is something that happens sometimes in Canada for interpretation. 
because the French and the English are both valid law. So they note in R uh, V J M, the British Columbia Youth Court considered that the predecessor to Section 5 of the regulations did not cover finger rings with fixed, immovable projecting blades or spikes. Collings uh, relied in large part on the French version of the regulations, which at the time used the word escomatable, uh, I'm probably mispronouncing that, by contrast to the English formulation capable of being projected from the surface of the ring. Uh, the judge interpreted the, that word that I'm having trouble with in the French version as concealable, disappearing, or retractable to conclude that the definition and regulations could not apply to rings with fixed spikes or sharp objects. As mentioned, it's for that stupid thing with the blade that flips up, not the one with the cat ears. In light of the French version, the judge considered that the English version of the regulations has to be interpreted literally. The awkward English phrase must be construed quite literally. That is to say, there must be blades or points that do not normally project from the surface of the ring, but that are capable of being projected from the surface of the ring. So, and then they quote another case on this. That's the case of the Queen and Colette. And it finds the same thing. So there's case law on these rings specifically that says that they're legal. Nevertheless, the government is still trying to seize them at the border, saying we think they're illegal. Now we're going to get to the racism because uh, you knew it was coming and it is really something. So the CBSA also argued that its proposed interpretation is consistent with the inclusion of similar goods in the regulations. So we banned a bunch of other stuff that is kind of similar. So you should read this as being banned. The CBSA submitted evidence to the effect that spiked finger rings are similar to the goods in issue, are a type of Japanese martial arts weapon known variously as a kakute, kakua, kakushi, or kakushu. I'm probably mispronouncing that too. I apologize. The CBSA argued that the spiked finger rings are listed in the regulations alongside other weapons of Japanese origins. And it keeps going. In other words, Section 5 should be read as part of an effort by the government to prohibit a series of Japanese martial arts weapons. Huh. So really, the government, what they're saying here is the government wanted to ban Japanese culture here. And therefore, we should interpret this ring as being part of Japanese culture. And therefore, it's also banned because we were racist against the Japanese. And if this is Japanese, then it must be something they intended to ban. What the actual hell? <laughs> if I was on this tribunal, I would be losing my mind at this point. Just going, are you freaking kidding me? You're saying that because you say it's a Japanese weapon, that that means it's banned because they banned another of you know, a number of other Japanese weapons. Now, the tribunal doesn't buy this argument, but it also doesn't come down on it the way I would have. What they say is, the tribunal notes, however, that other Japanese martial arts weapons referred uh, to by the CBSA are explicitly referred to in the regulations by their Japanese name, which they do in a number of places, although um, they kind of mangle a bunch of them. Whereas Section 5 only contains a physical description of certain prohibited finger rings which may or may not, depending on the interpretation of its terms, include the Kakute style spiked finger rings. For this reason, this argument by the CBSA is unavailing. They are not convinced at all. They're saying, we're going to go with the prior case law, guys. You know, you've lost on this issue repeatedly, so you get to lose again today. Now, I should note that all of the arguments that Ms. Steves makes are also not accepted by the court. The court does not uh, rely on the memorandum. They say, listen, we are not bound by the memorandum. And that was the right call for the court to make. Because if the court had said, listen, we, we think we are bound from the by these memorandums, then all you get is that means the government can essentially dictate things to the, uh, you know, to the courts. That's a bad thing. We don't want the government to be able to tell the courts how to rule. So, yeah, you would think that the government itself would say that their memorandum should at least govern how they decide to proceed with things, but nah, that's uh, that's just crazy talk. 
I find this case to be just outrageous. <laughs> the whole argument of, listen, we were actually just trying to ban Japanese culture. So this is part of that. It should be banned too, right? Ooh, um, couldn't pay me enough to make that argument. Just could not do it. Um, you won't find me. I don't care if I, you know, if I end up working for the government one day, I, that's not an argument I'm going to make. So yeah, um, let me know what you think in the comments below and um, don't buy those things. Also, don't buy this rock. I'm just, you know, I'm kidding. Uh, I think YouTube's got policies against selling uh, weapons. So I can't actually sell you the rock, although I can make jokes about selling you the rock. This is my rock. I'm going to keep it for um, self-defense reasons, I guess. All right. Um, thank you for watching. Please like this video. Subscribe to see more content like this. Um, hit the notification. I've seen with uh, one of my recent videos, I've had a lot of people asking, hey, could you make a video on this topic? And I did. It was the one on the emojis and contracts. And so if you missed that, that's probably because you didn't have notifications turned on. Hit that notification bell. It'll tell you when more videos like this come out and then you can see them. Um, so thank you for watching. I also want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level, Traveling Science Man, the CCFR, CAME, Canada's National Firearms Association, and the Canadian Shooting Sports Association. At the $30 level, Sights and Arms Limited and Jane Babin Luxor. And at the $20 level, Lindsay Metcalf, Larry Kalniak, Kyle Fox, Here's a Coin Legal Witcher, Cameron Johnson, Andrew Elsich, Vicky, and Dorky Dane. Thank you as well to my $10 supporters who will be in the crawl immediately following. Thank you for watching. I hope this has armed you with knowledge. See you next time.